Hi guys, Mr. Paul at Biology here, going through June 2014's Biol 4 paper. Um, this is question three, and it's got a combination of succession-y stuff, combination of diversity stuff, and some photosynthesis thrown in for, uh, for good measure. It's quite a nice little question, actually. So it says that farmland previously used for growing crops uh, was left for 30 years and developed into woodland. During this period, ecologists recorded an increase in the diversity of birds in the area. Name the process that resulted in the development of woodland from farmland. Nice and straightforward, it's succession. Succession. There we go. Um, the next question, a bit more tricky. Explain the increase in the diversity of birds as the woodland developed. Well, if there's a wider variety of plants, that means there's going to be a wider variety of habitats, uh, of insects coming and living there, and that means more food and more niches for the uh, the birds to occupy. So let's structure that into a nice exam answer. So, more plants can lead to more insects. You know, you don't have to put this insect stage in, but it's quite interesting to put it in. Um, and basically that, that means more food or more variety of food would be, would be a better way to put it, of food and habitats. Um, and that means you're going to have more niches for birds to occupy. So remember that a e ecological niche is the role that an organism fulfills in the ecosystem. So more niches for birds. So an increased diversity. Quite a nice little question, that, and it's another one that you can learn a stock answer for, and it'll come up year after year after year. So let's move on. The ecologists also investigated photosynthesis in two species of plant found in the woodland. One of the species was adapted to growing in bright light. I'm just going to make my highlighter a bit smaller. Uh, bright light, which is the sun plant. Make it a bit bigger. Um, and the other one was adapted to growing in the shade, the shade plant. The ecologists' results are shown in figure two. So the sun plant, this guy here, um, showing this nice pattern here with a plateau between A and B, and the shade plant showing a much shallower gradient with no real plateau here. But if we look at what's actually being measured here, on the x-axis we've got an increase in light intensity, so that's what's changing. And then what's being measured is always on the, uh, the y-axis. That's the rate of uptake or release of carbon dioxide by the leaves in milligrams per decimeter squared per hour. So when it's in this section, um, there is going to be CO2 being released. And in this section, there's going to be CO2 taken in. So basically, we can put on here, when it's being released, that means that the rate of respiration is greater than photosynthesis and when it's being taken in it's the other way around the rate of photosynthesis is greater than the respiration rate so let's take this to the question give two factors which could be limiting the rate of photosynthesis in the sun plant between a and b on figure two so where are we between a and b this area here well, it's not light intensity because we're keeping increasing the light intensity. So what are the other two factors that limit photosynthesis? Well, it's carbon dioxide concentration and temperature. You know, this is GCSE stuff, so a real nice gift of a question here. Explain why carbon dioxide uptake is a measure of net productivity. Well, it's quite nice because you can summarize this in a nice little equation. You can just say um, net productivity is basically, um, let's have a look before I write this down, before I say it, net pro productivity is equal to photosynthesis, which is going to be producing sugars, take away or minus respiration, which is going to be using up sugars. Nice, succinct way of putting this. Um, Use the information in figure three to explain how the shade plant is better adapted than the sun plant to growing 
That's the key bit for the second mark at low light intensities. Now it really does depend on what you class as a low light intensity here. I'm going to class everything before 100 as low light intensity. Um, and if we look, if we shift that line and we look further and further and further this away, um, we see that at really ridiculously low light intensity, as we drop below, um, uh, we drop below, say, I don't know, 30, 20 units of light, um, we see that in the shade plant, I'm just going to zoom in here, in the shade plant, much less carbon dioxide is being released compared to the um, uh, compared to the light plant. And basically, what this is meaning is that um, the shade plant is doing much less respiration. So, respiration in shade plant is lower at low light intensities. And if the respiration rate is lower, that means you're going to be using less of your sugars um, to produce your energy and stuff. So less sugar or less glucose is used. And if you've got more glucose kicking around, you can do more growth and you can increase your net primary productivity. Less glucose is used. And that will do it. That will do it for two marks. Let's give ourselves eight out of eight and say thank you very much for watching. Um, Please like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for question four.